You once again delayed the timing of an re interest rate increase, um, driving the rate path lower. It's now either December or February. Which one is more likely? Well, that's uh, that's too that's too early that's too early to tell because I mean we'll see when once we get to get to December what to what to do. But on the other hand, I mean. We've talked about uh, this for a long time now, and we're getting closer, and that's uh, that's pretty that's pretty clear because our projections from July and our projections this time are pretty uh, pretty similar. So, in that sense, we wanted to be quite clear compared to what we have said in right. the past. Uh, but, Governor, why is October off the table? So, you know, certain market participants thought October may have been the right time to go. Because in the short run, the inflationary pressure simply is not there. And actually, given that uh, now inflation is running slightly above target, a lot of that comes actually from en energy prices. And uh, we expect energy prices to kind of fall back. And that means that the inflation will fall slightly below our target for the next, uh, for the next six months or so. And with that, as a, with that as a background, October is just too early. Governor, you also signaled that the rate increase will be a full quarter point when you do move. Does that mean that discussion of a smaller increase is now off the table? Uh, yes, because if you, took, if you look at what we have done in the past, despite the fact that it's a long, long time since we increased, uh, increased the policy rate the last time, normally when we have done so, it's been... Uh, 25 basis point increases, and uh, we have concluded that doing less than that wouldn't be meaningful. There is also some more dissent on the board uh, for this decision. So does that mean keeping open a December rate increase is an attempt to placate some who were not happy with the decision this time around? Well, I, I mean, each and every time uh, when the policy changes in the sense that rates go up, when they were not going up earlier or going down, then usually you end up with a few people dissenting in one way or the other because it's just simply hard to figure out when exactly to do this, that, or the other. So that's kind of what one, uh, one, would, uh, one would expect. But this time, if you look at the various views and the two dissenters, they have really different views on what to do and what not to do. So uh, there is a stable 4-2 majority for the monetary policy, the way it is explained in the monetary policy report presently. Uh, Governor, can I go back to something that Scarlett was asking, which is, uh, you know, if the discussion of a smaller increase is now off the table, to which you answered, yes, it is off the table because that won't be effective enough. But if you do two smaller interest rate increases, is that not like just one bigger one? Would that not be a way of kind of moving the markets along who seem to be confused as to whether it's a hawkish or dovish message you're delivering? Now again, I mean, we've looked at this and uh, doing 25 basis points uh, has worked well for us in the past and with a high, fairly high likelihood is going to do that in the future as well. I happen to be a deputy governor in the 90s when we did five basis points and 10 basis points a number of times and uh, uh, my experience is that that wasn't, an, that wasn't a, a good exercise at all. It kept everybody busy, uh, but the economic impact was, was not what uh, one would hope for. Uh, do you worry that your message is not clear enough for the markets? And also, at what level of uh, the krona do you worry? It, it just seems it doesn't really have a bottom. Now, when it comes to rate increases, uh, our hope is, of course, is that we, we are clear and, or that we are clear e enough. And that's why we are much clearer this time compared to in the past. And that's just simply because we're getting closer to changing the policy rate, uh, which has not been the case for quite, uh, quite a while. And then we have a floating exchange rate, and that means that uh, you cannot tie individual uh, policy rate decisions uh, one to one, so to speak, to the, to the exchange rate. Uh, particularly in the short run, the exchange rate varies up and down, and some of it has to do what's going on with what's going on in the Swedish economy. Some of it is what's going on in the global economy and in other, parts, in, in other parts of the world. So one, one shouldn't make too precise a connection between the policy rate and the exchange rate. 
Well, to Francine's point, I'm looking at uh, WCRS on the Bloomberg, which highlights how the stock is losing ground versus uh, the other G10 currencies, weaker versus the pound, the yen, the franc. Um, going to that idea of the recent depreciation in uh, the krona, what is your read on the declines? How do you determine whether this is a reflection of euro area stress that's causing the euro to strengthen against smaller currencies or a drag from the upcoming elections? Very, very hard to pass uh, pass judgment on that because if you look at our exchange rate projection, basically we have said for a long, long time that the krona is likely to appreciate because the Swedish economy is doing well relative to many other economies in Europe and in other parts uh, in other parts of the world. But on the other hand, in the short run, all sorts of financial sector financial factors uh, domestically and and abroad can impact the exchange rate, which has not necessarily quite a lot to do with what's going on in the real economy and that's why it's incredibly hard to make exchange rate projections in the in the short run and uh, that's why also this time our projection is that the, uh, over time since we're countries doing well the corona will appreciate but that doesn't mean that all sorts of things can happen in the short run Fair enough. I, I want to get your thoughts also on an anniversary that's coming up, Governor. Uh, we're approaching the 10-year mark of when Lehman Brothers collapsed. What is your thinking of the safeguards that have been put in place to prevent another crisis? Is the global financial system safer now than it was 10 years ago? Yes, the global financial system is safer today because uh, many, many have done an awful lot of work when it comes to uh, improve uh, the regulatory imp improvements in the regulatory uh, framework but having said that you never you never really know because as human beings we always tend to say that this time is different and history tells us that that's not the, that's not the case uh, but we are in a better position actually in a much better position today to sort to sort out a mess if a mess were to occur at some time uh, some point in the future but, Governor, what if we think so much about the mess that happened 10 years ago that we miss the next mess? Is the emerging market contagion a mess? Well, when it comes to emerging markets, I would say that, at least from my perspective, and that's, of course, very much from, let me call it a Nordic perspective, uh, there's nothing new under the sun because those countries in trouble have been in trouble many times in the past. And that's very, very unfortunate. Uh, but uh, Sweden, as, a, as an economy, is very far removed from those countries in trouble. So it might be very, very difficult for the countries in, in question where you have to engineer one way or the other, ideally, in my view, together with the IMF, a turnaround. Uh, but those events are not likely to affect us quite a, a lot because our financial sector is not really active in those parts of the world. Mm. Um, Governor, what could impact you that's completely outside your control? Is there a Lehman-type moment that you think could happen that you're watching out for? Is there a canary in the coal mine that we need to look at? Is it borrowing again or something else? Well, what affects us is that we have a, our banks are big, and there are few, and they are very big relative to the size of the Swedish economy, and they have a lot of funding coming from, uh, from abroad. And that means that if markets uh, freeze elsewhere, that will immediately affect us. And uh, the sort of the Lehman episode from our perspective was kind of the perfect storm in the sense that we were, we were okay, uh, but we were at the same time really, really affected what happened elsewhere. And that's what happens when, when you have free capital flows and when you're highly, highly dependent on funding that comes, abroad, comes from abroad. And if that were to happen again, that would certainly affect us. Uh, more domestically, we have uh, mismanaged our housing market for decades, and that's a risk that, that certainly needs to be managed, uh, and which is, uh, which is out there, and uh, that's one worry that we have had uh, domestically for many, many years.